awkward. <laughs> oh yeah, so as, as we're getting into this... Uh, so do you think Alliance needs to uh, win it? What do they have to do? You say you think VP's draft is easier to execute, but there still must be hope for Alliance. No, oh, absolutely. Alliance is not out on this draft at all. I I think if Jug's lane goes really well, which it it, it should, right? I think it's going to be a pretty good lane for Juggernaut. He's going to be against the Sand King, which, you have yes, Sand King is a strong lane office. opponent, but Juggernaut's probably one of, I think, the top three best heroes to deal with him in lane. So... I believe, I believe in Alliance, I think they have definitely a, a, a good game in front of them. Uh, talking about that, VP, it looks like they've smoked up and they're seriously thinking about First Blood. Because, uh, you know, you have some good stuns with Virus Strike, with Ramsey's Rayfire Blast, so if they run into anyone, they might be able to get this. Alliance sniffing this out, they reveal them immediately. That, that was a good ward placed by Insania. Wraith King pops on the high ground, so they just gotta leave. So the question is, what? how are they going to run their lanes here? Because they might rotate the Sand King top and leave Ramsey's bottom against the Jug. And I think that's what they're debating on doing. 30 seconds to battle. Yeah, that, uh, as you say, that might Hello. be uh, a better lane for it, but uh, they are taking their time. They have uh, both heroes here. So no one, ha no one is committed to the lanes for the side of uh, Virtus Pro. Oh. I didn't even see that Observer Ward get placed there on the on the rune by a Dire. Like, VP must have snuck that rune in somehow. Or that ward. It's a really good well, ward. I think they did it, you know, after their smoke broke and they knew they weren't getting any sort of... Mm -hmm. the also allows them to see their matchups, which is really good, because so, Alliance hasn't really seen anything other than the Wraith King, so they didn't really know where the heroes were going to be. Virtuous Pro now can confirm where they want to put their heroes, so I guess they are going to put the Sand King bottom against Juggernaut Enigma. Denying the range creep, he'll probably go out deny the next one as well, which is pretty much the standard. Makes the offlaners game just that much easier. Yeah, one thing Alliance did successfully get uh, is three bounty runes. You know that that little net worth advantage earlier. And are they are they looking to get an early? I think in the tree. Pasha should be fine. Oh, we went sandstorm one actually. He's gonna take us a ton of damage. This might be dead. Uh, he might just die. That's slow at the stroke of fate. Oh. The Sandstorm to disjoint the last hit. Nice play there by Pasha. But they force him to use his salve very early in this one. No one in Koikva in the mid lane are just duking it out. And this is pretty much what you expect from the Queen of Pain versus TA matchup. TA just like hits the creeps as fast as she can before she gets harassed out of lane and then just ferries herself regen. Because like, you do lose the lane as far as harassment goes. But as long as you can kill the creeps, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's, uh, and obviously the great thing about the Templar Assassin is her flash farm. So as long as she gets a few levels, she will be able to recover in the jungle. Bit of a rough early lane. Mm -hmm. Insania now has the uh, two sentry wards. So Pasha won't be able to hide in that sandstorm indefinitely. Does have a sentry, sentry of his own, so we will start seeing those sentry battles here in this bottom lane. Yeah, that's pretty much like a, a necessary sacrifice, I guess, if you're playing a Sand King, right? If you come to your lane without a Sentry and you do try to go to the Sandstorm build, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. So nice play by VP to give him a Sentry to try and combat that. That's, uh, so he's uh, using the Sandstorm to farm up here. They do have a Sentry. So, and they... Uh, but Pacha, he's just sitting in his Sandstorm. I don't think they're revealing that they know him. Till they're ready to make it. Let's talk about top lane. So we got Ramses on the Great King versus Boxy. Actually, speaking of it, they get lit. taking a little bit of yes. harass damage here. Ramses is taking a lot of damage there. Uh, only one point in retaliate, so it's not really that much damage. And obviously, with the help of the Shadow Shadow Word, he is able to regen a, a fair amount. But mid lane, actually, no one getting very, very low out of mana. And Still being affected by that Shadow Strike. So, you know, I, we all look at the CS and he is doing okay, but I, I assume most of his money has had to be spent on regen so far. Yeah, it's pretty much what you have to do, right? You just keep popping Refraction, hitting the creeps, killing them, and then the career comes out with another Salve and another Mango, and you just kind of rinse repeat over and over again to get the levels, because that's really all you can do in this lane as a TA is just secure levels. And then, like you said, she flash farms very quickly going into the mid game. Yeah, uh, so it's, uh, at the lanes, we're still waiting for our first blood. Um, 
Archer, he has not got very much out of his bottom lane. I guess that is really what you expect when you're a solo laner. But, you know, for every CS Pasha hasn't get got, you just look at how Roger's doing here in the jungle and he's having an <laughs> absolutely yep. great time. Top lane, are they actually going to find a killer? Solo getting really low. Couple yes, more so he pops his stick. That might be enough to save him. And Boxy, with the help of that retaliate, is able to get the kill Tiger with that stun. Is he going to go down as well? The Fate Vault, they need one more right click from Ramses. And no, actually, he is probably going to survive that. Damage reduction. So in the mid lane, Quickfoot does find the kill onto no one. So that's pretty big. Yeah, it's, uh, it's two kills were going on and we caught first blood. So I don't think we can be punished about that that much. But you know, the amount no one has spent on regen, uh, Quickfoot, that, that kill, you know, it's just given him this level advantage. And now this lane just gets even easier for the Queen of Pain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One thing I do oh, really like... Oh, he finds like a kid. regen rune. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> of all things to find, Quakefo is very happy about that. He can now put a lot of pressure on a no one. I was actually just going to point out, I really like where Roger is uh, farming, by the way. I love this aggressive take over the enemy jungle. You know, why farm your own camps when you uh, reduce the farm on the enemy side? Of you know, no one's able to... Mm -hmm. This is... I mean, Honestly, I haven't really seen many Enigma players do this, so I'm I'm liking it though. Like you said, it's a very aggressive play, but there's a lot more farm to be had over here, and it also puts him a little closer to the bot lane. Yeah, uh, Boxy was just having a good time with Wraith King under tower, but it looks like the Warlocks might be one to trade the time. The double edge, the Fate Bolt, they have the retaliate, but not that many stocks. The stun, it might save life for Solo, and his regen on the last Shadow Word is going to be enough. But getting very low as we miss a kill over on the flanking. Or at least I missed the kill. I don't know if you know. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I kind of caught the tail end of it, but it's pretty much what you'd expect. Um, Sen King just playing under his tower, but gets caught out from Jug and Curse Stroke. Not much you can do about it. Actually, Insane just walks right into Roger. Yeah, it's taking a lot of damage for those idols, but Quakefer rotates round to the shrine. I think this is going to be an easy game. He even commits the Sonic Wave for that. He does farm up the idols as well, so maybe a bit of a, a farming ultimate there. That's super worth it. I love that. I mean, he's not going to use that to kill TA most likely because she's just going to yeah. be clearing mid wave and pushing. Oh, oh. in the top lane, they just overextend the Lithwick too much and Solo, he's going to go down as well. And I actually saw that kill at the Wraith King. He just wasn't expecting the burst damage of the Hoost Stomp as well as the double edge and all those retaliate attacks. He was just standing next to the Centaur, not respecting the damage that could come out at all. Yeah, these, I mean, these lanes are insane. These guys are just du duking it out constantly. And I think Overall, this definitely favors Alliance, right? Looking at net worth, they're 3,000 ahead right now. A lot of this uh, is going to be on the Juggernaut, right? A hero that we said, his lane's going to be pretty safe for the most part. And Koikva as well. His lane going really well. Yeah, it's, uh, they've actually left Mickey uh, to his own devices, but he now has dust on himself. So, you know, uh, if Pasha isn't careful with his position, definitely is the... Mickey to uh, take him down. Oh, well, Pasha gets dusted up bottom. They're trying to get this kill. He might be able to just... He can bar a strike to the high ground, and he's going to feel the need to do it. But now they rotate him with the Rubik. They're going to have the stun from Insania. Fate Bolt a little bit. They commit the lift. Are they going to give this kill to Mikkei? Yes, they do. Wow. So kills all around the map already. A 3k advantage for the side of Alliance, as well yeah, as do great. kills. But, I mean, we said Alliance wants to snowball out of the lanes, and it looks like that's definitely what they're going to be able mm -hmm. I mean, that's this is pretty much kind of what happens when you pick an enigma, right? You do sacrifice a lane typically, but this is a lot of bottom lane but again. Darda killed no one. The slow of the trap, but they lapped with the last point. The last tick of that ink spell was just in range of the Templar Assassin, and that's another kill to no one. Nice. Going to quick, but too. Yeah, it just kills the rotation from Insania and Tiger. They're really starting to pay off. And because Boxy had such a good start in this top lane, you know, he's more than happy to play against both of them because, oh, look, you know, he doesn't offer the Wraith King any more kill for that. Box is just fine or by himself, and it just means uh, Insania and Tiger, wherever they go, they just seem to be follow. Yeah, exactly. This, we talked about Centaur versus Wraith King, right? He's not very worried about dying to a Wraith King, like, ever, pretty much. So, Wraith King, all he wants to do is just farm. So, he's going for the first first item, Midas. He's going to use skeletons to, to jungle, essentially, and we see it right there. But that's pretty much the best you can do on a Wraith King in this lane, is just try and out-farm the enemy safe lane. But it's going to be kind of hard considering Juggernaut's game has gone so well so far.
Yeah, it's, uh, and, and you can tell how pressured he feels. Radiant uh, he's holding on to the, the level six because he honestly feels that he might die and things? have to use that reincarnation because most, most raid kicks I see, they're competent enough not to take that ultimate level. Ramsey's just sitting on to that point. It's so it's it's very difficult not to hold that point this game, right? There's so much burst damage on the side of Alliance. They have a lot of control as well. So say Quakefoot rotates up, they can easily kill the Wraith King. So he definitely needs to hold that point. No one in the mid lane getting super low. Yeah, that, that was literally just one Shadow Strike and Green of Pain. You know, you just cut through those refraction charges. And Quaver, the Sonic way. Oh, the refraction just in time. Has been slain. Top lane, another engagement. They're going in deep on Centaur, but it might be a little too far. But the first use of the black hole over here on the boxing, they have the idol. Roger, he's getting very low, but he is able to get that kill, so two quick kills. And Pasha, is he gonna be able to chase Tiger? It doesn't look like it. And all the meanwhile, Quakefar on the back lines, it looks like he was able to clean up that Enigma. Yeah, he just went for a blink, scream of pain, takes him out, no problem. That The top engagement was really interesting because Enigma got his black hole just in time to, to cast it there. So it was very close for, for Virtuous Pro. Ends up working out. Take down Centaur, second highest net worth on the map. I just can't believe how risky uh, Quaver was with that uh, sonic wave there in this mid lane. Just trying to get that cheeky kill onto no one. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, unfortunately, it didn't pay off. And... VP, you know, they might have got two kills, but they're still slipping further behind in this CS. Yet your failure lives on. Taking a look, Mick A just chasing Pasha around the map, not letting him farm up. He definitely just wants to secure this bottom bounty run. He knows Black Hole's on cooldown. Yeah, it looks like he is going to respect both of them. Pasha, the stun, but it doesn't end just in time. And a quick for, uh, what items is going for? Actually building a first item Orchid. Do you think this is a, is an Orchid game? It's very good against heroes like TA because you can prevent her from getting the refraction or meld off. But obviously against Enigma, a hero who doesn't want to have to get an early uh, BKB, there's not a lot of lockdown for him if he goes on uh, a hero with an Orchid, right? It's either the Wraith King or the Sand King. So I, I really do like this aggression. I'm about it. It's a good item pick up this game for sure. Uh, and I'm actually, you know, I, I switched over to the net worth and you can just see how far ahead this, uh, this juggernaut of Mikke is. He already has his drums and, you know, he's not that far away from the No one's in trouble mid. They latch just at the end of it, but they don't have detection for the meld. Mikke, he's out of his dust. All right, that's an oversight for sure. <laughs> I feel like you have to have uh, some sort of detection there, but no one also kind of baiting them out a little bit. Enigma's not too far away. Warlock now behind him. Only level 5 on the Warlock, though. So no Golem. Fatal Bond's level 3. Yep. Ramses is on his way to recovery now with uh, the Hand of Midas. So, you know, if you let this game uh, procrastinate for a bit too long from Alliance, he will be able to find his way back into this. But now lifted up. He, he does have a point saved, so he will be able to pop it into his reincarnation. But he's, he's not going to use it. He's dead. Yeah. yeah, he knows at that point, if he does put the point in Reincarnation, he's just going to put it on cooldown for 200 seconds because he will die a second time. Bottom lane, Centaur actually in trouble. Did they have Black Hole? Nope, not for 30. Stampede, he is affected by the Manifest, but that is going to be enough to save his life. Just stun one more second with it, Pasha. He does connect, and this might be enough to be able to take down Boxy. Goes for the stun. Quakefer is sitting here, holding onto the Sonic Wave, and just showing his presence is going to save the life of the Centaur. That's a great, great rotation here from Quakefoot, just making sure his Centaur doesn't die. And all the meanwhile, Mickey going to be able to pressure that tier two in the top lane, putting just that much more damage on. Yeah, no Quakefoot, impressive blink here in the jungle turn in the Fought River, but now no one's in the no one with the help of that Sentry, the Sonic Wave. Quakefoot, oh he gets gosh. so low, but he is able to get that kill. Inkswell is pretty good against TA, I just saw. Uh, that's that's kind of like one of the time, like one of those things I don't really think about that often, but Sand King now. Yeah, they do have dust, but again, they're trying to get their kill. The first use of the golem, they do manage to take down Quakefoot. Now the ultimate onto Boxy, is he going to fall? Yes, he is. It's taken from the stolen Black Hole Tiger. They've caught two of them. Do they have the Omni Slash on top of this? The AK, the Spin, the Lift. He does have the Omni Slash, but he's not going to use it. He's focusing on taking down Roger. The Warlock was able to get out. So, uh, I think all in all, a nice fight by the side of Virtus Pro, able to get three kills here in this bottom lane. And Tiger, he's just running away from the golem. But yeah, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. This is that was a great engagement for Virtus Pro. They get two really big kills, 
and then obviously just the crimp stroke is a nice icing on the cake there but they don't really lose a lot for it and that's a big that's really big for them one thing i want to talk about taiga is level nine this guy, he was sitting top for a few minutes. I looked at him, he was level six, and then suddenly he's level nine, like four minutes later. So, bottom tower. that's uh, pretty I dope. Mean, I mean, uh, that's that's why you should eat your tomes in the morning. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this bottom engagement, I don't know if you saw who was the main damage dealer, but Warlock did two and a half K damage. Power. That's just some oh, yeah. of the fatal bonds there. I feel like yeah. broken that's broken record. pretty good. So, I mean, you talked about it earlier, right? You want to be able to have forms of purge for that on Alliance. So we'll see if anyone besides the Juggernaut has any way of dealing with that as the game goes on. Maybe Centaur, I think, would probably be the most likely candidate and potentially uh, BKB on Queen of Pain. Those are, I would assume, going to be the two first things. We'll see Pasha bottom lane, dust it up. Yeah, they're chasing him into the trees. He's already used his fire strike and now they found him. I, I don't think you're getting out of this one, Pasha. They even commit the only slash dust. Oh, Tiger, man. It's he has a, a stolen burrow. I, I know, he used it to steal the kill away from Mickey. It's a, that's just absolutely classic. Tiger's, Tiger's the core now. You know, he looked Juggernaut in the eyes. He's like, look at me. Okay. Wow, I am the core now. A, a great deny there by Solo. You don't usually expect that against two heroes, but Warlock, even with his uh, small base damage, was able to get that deny. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So Level four burrow strike on Rubik is so scary. You have to be, you have to respect that if you're a VP right now. Uh, so I was gonna talk about the the flow of this game and how it feels. Obviously, Alliance they feel pretty far in advance. Check top lane, Pasha. But we saw it both sides. Pasha, he's channeling his epicenter, but he's already used his fire strike, so he's not able to get the oh Sonic God. wave. And another engagement here in the bottom lane. They take the delay into this enigma. So they thought they need a few more hits, but the mechanism it is gonna be enough to save. Roger for that little bit of time in our round seeds. Going on to Tiger, Tiger, the Yule Scepter, and the bar level C bar strike. I don't think you're getting out of this one, round seeds. He does have a point in his ultimate, so he will respawn after he goes down this one, but it looks like Mickey wants to force it. No one laying into Mickey. Does he have his healing ward? He doesn't need it. Thanks to the Stampede, even though it is on cooldown. So, two kills here in this bottom lane for P. Actually, Sankey did die on the top lane, but. All across the map, things going alliances way. Yeah, they're not 8,000 gold ahead. I think they got every bounty rune there as well, so they're just further like accentuating their lead. Taiga now has a Yule Scepter. This guy has... He's so far. Like, he is just behind the mid lane TA as the fourth position Rubik. Like, this guy is doing so much work this game. Yeah, it's, when you have... Uh, what is essentially four cores and you're not the Dyer's Enigma lineup, you know things have gone well for you for the side of Alliance. Business. Yeah. <laughs> Haste. Because, you, be honest, this is what we expect to see from Enigma lineup. They're the ones who have uh, four cores, and even with that great use of Black Hole and Golem, be the big team fight that beat you. There's Alliance in these scrappy engagements. Mm hmm. Pasha's game is really struggling. Oh, barely misses the Brawl Strike bottom, actually. We'll get out. But I would say, Pasha's game is, he seems to be struggling a lot, right? He did not have a good lane stage. He just has brown boots and a blink dagger. Oh, well, Omni Slash there just picks up a free kill on Solo. Yep, yeah, don't worry. Uh, we, we managed to catch that. Just <laughs> the Warlock in his jungle and it's like, he shouldn't be here. Yeah, I saw the drums pop and I was like, all right, that's interesting. But on top lane, and they're going on to the Raid King. They know his ultimate's on cooldown. And this is going to be another easy kill for Quake for. That's, that's it's what working. Is. And it's so good. Yeah, and as well as the, the Ink Squirrel on top of Quake for, you know, he just blinks in to whoever he wants, gets that instant done. Yeah, I worry for Virtuous Pro. This might be a quick one here, just because Raid King doesn't seem like he's going to be coming online here anytime soon. Obviously, going that Phase Midas Radiance build, pretty much the standard you see for that hero. But. Alliance has so many ways to deal with this TA and the Rubik pick counter like gives them a, a lot of counter initiation as far as the Enigma and Warlock go. So I think Alliance's draft is just super well rounded. Uh, VP, they are setting up for a big fight here in this mid lane. The bar, the epi center, but it's not really going to affect Mecha. It's a nice bonus to start off the three of them, but they just stampede to try and cap down for initiate on the back lines. No one. And they do lose tanking. They try to take down Boxy. They get his game very low. They have the Guardian Dream. They manage to take down Boxy, but now TA might be in real trouble here. 
Hey, do they have cash for him? They do the black hole if Roger wants to use it. He has the spin, so he's not taking any damage. It's gonna get stolen. Only gonna be able to kill him. They steal the black hole, as you say, over here. Tiger, but oh. instantaneously, lit enough damage over here. Mickey, the man of this. He is affected by the fatal ones. Is he gonna take down? They do manage to get the big kill over onto Mickey. Oh no, that is just a major miscommunication there. You can tell, like, he gets the black hole and it's like, alright, let's go, they're all right here. And then someone on Alliance had to say no. <laughs> so, he immediately cancels the stolen black hole. That is really unfortunate for Alliance there. But yeah, that's really fortunate for VP, they find both Posh, or they find both Centaur and the Juggernaut. So, two really big kills for them. Yeah, a nice uh, net worth ring there. We'll be sorry to see what happened in the net worth shot. Yeah, and it's exactly to say nothing cancelled that black hole of Tiger. Like he might be in trouble once again. I guess he does have his Yule Scepter if he wants to pop it. OTP for a couple seconds. Now Roger's here. I think this is gonna. Oh, yeah. Alliance is pushing mid lane, though. Yeah, one thing to note is uh, Alliance, they know the big cooldowns uh, are not online for the They might just look to get more aggressive or take some sort of map control away. And Sania gets caught here in the in the jungle. He's probably gonna go down. Yes, slowed up by a trap, and no one, you know, he does. He has managed to farm himself into this game. He has key items on a temporary assassin, desolator, the blink dagger. So, you know, now if these supports are out of position, they can be burst. Mm -hmm. He just queues up a BKB pretty much immediately, which I love it. He really just needs to be a tempo maker for VP here, being able to turn these fights and. As long as he's not being controlled, he can definitely find kills on almost any hero on the side of Alliance. Looks like they want to fight around this bounty room. Popping the healing wall. Alright, bounty room's going to go 2-2. Both teams just kind of taking opposite sides of the map. They see no one here, and he's just going to blink out. I, was like, I don't think he's too scared. There's no detection over on Mickey. There is on Insania. He does have sentries, so if they are able to find the Temporal Assassin, they they do have the possibility of taking it down. But all the meanwhile, Pasha has his blink bag completed. You know, continuing to push up his own. All right, Ramses is getting close to this relic, so Alliance knows that, and they're rotating over right now. And he yes. just walks away. Looks like that was just a bit for us. There's no real any follow-up hit. Foxy, you know, he went for this early Vanguard hood to make himself very, very tanky, but it means they are lacking just initiation. cunning or perhaps of desperation, Dyer's structures have been bottom tower is. Alright, no one definitely or, or uh, no one. Virtuous Pro definitely slowing down the pace of this game. They have a fantastic late game, right? All of these heroes on Virtuous Pro scale exceptionally well. So I don't think they mind obviously going late. They, their win condition at this point is to just prevent Alliance from making it to their high ground. And I hear an Epi. Yeah, the channel is so oh my gosh. gosh. The three of them on the backline point where he blinks away to save the dual scepter. On top of the Rubik, but Tiger, he probably will fall. They have the fade bot on the two of them. Boxy stampedes, but is he going to be able to get away? He's sitting very low, is affected by the Shadow Worth, trying to TP in the truth. They have vision. No one is able to pick up that kill onto Boxy. That was That's a good great find. for one. But Foxy, he's a vital part of the Alliance team fight, and I think this cost them there too. Yeah, I mean, they did commit a lot of ultimates, but you still have Black Hole available, and ooh, Mickey just running in in the mid lane. I don't think you get close here. He's got to be careful. They, if they had found that kill onto the Koikva, um, Queen of Pain, on that high ground, this would be a very different game. They would definitely have no issues going right down that mid lane for that tower. Yeah, they, they were very close to uh, Roger. He now has a blink dagger. I don't know if, uh, previous little engagement because otherwise we might have seen the the black hole follow up to that. What was a great golem? Mm -hmm. Mickey finds a DD rune, just goes right into the Roche pit, and there is no detection on the side of Virtus Pro to see this happening. So this could be kind of just done right under their nose. Yeah, Ramsey's. You know, he doesn't really want to fight yet. He's still working on that radiant. That's a blink on Roger now. So this is pretty big deal. Like they do have great potential to fight around Roche Pit, but like I said, they just don't know what's happening. And, and, and you know, 
Can't just respect the black hole the entire time. Eventually, you do have to make moves on match and map. But knowing that Golem is on court, maybe it's enough of them. Ooh, they find the Pasha Bottom. going to be punished. Oh boy. He have the Orchid. He's not going to commit the Sonic Wave. He does have a Yule Scepter, but I don't think he's getting away from this. They know where he is. Oh, Sonic Wave does. That almost missed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't know if that was going to hit him, but. Do. I'm surprised he had blink available after the Yules. I had figured he was just going to blink out to try and secure an easy TP, but ends up just trying to TP right away. He was very close to getting away. But the Sonic Wave just clipping him on the edge, it was didn't look like the Dyer's cone hit him, but is a, under I think the Sonic Wave is a little bit I bigger. I feel like a broken record. Yeah. So BKB finished on Koikva. We saw last fight how much damage you take just from a couple spells, so he definitely needs that available. Mickey taking a free mid-tier two tower. TA bottom lane is she dead? Great fire blast working. Uh, up. They are teaming in with Mickey, but if they needed. No one uh, rare overextension by him without the BKB and Yeah, I don't know why he's there. I really don't. I don't know why he's there. The, the Sand King just died there to the Rubik. They know he has Ra he had Wraith Fire Blast available. And Queen of Pain's Orchid makes TA's ability to play that lane pretty much impossible, right? Without a BKB. So that was a little, like you said, an uncharacteristic death by no one for sure. Yeah, and, and talking of BKBs, Quakefar has one of his own, so it's a little bit less susceptible to going down so his face. Mm-hmm. Ramses has the Radiance online, going for that Blink Dagger. This is where Wraith King starts to come online, right? Like, you farm so fast with your Skeletons, he goes for the Skeleton Attack damage, which is pretty much the standard. A lot of people were like, well, why would you get that talent if they can clear your Skeletons really easy? It's like, well, you, you pick it to farm. <laughs> That's about it. That 15 strength or whatever is not that big a deal at the end of the day. Yeah, it's, uh, I understand that. And it's, it's especially when, you know, the way you're winning fights, it's not by surviving for longer, it's by the rest of your team offering that control of the black hole or the golem. And your Raid King with his Raiding Spiger managed to catch him out, but I don't think there's any uh, follow up just because Boxy by Roger. Mm hmm. I really like Taiga's making this rotation. He comes all the way back top. I think probably just to steal Raid Fire Blast because all he had was the refraction from TA, which doesn't help him too much. Can, can you steal the, uh, the, the thumb and skeleton? Probably. I haven't seen it, but I imagine you could. Oh, they quite yeah, hunting, okay. but great blink out there from Roger. Yeah, and no one now with a completed KB, he should just be that tiny bit more survivable. But you know, the side of EP, they've really managed to after such an early lead that, you know, I'm looking at it now and it was 10k around 15 minute mark, but right back for the side of VP. That is exactly what they want. So they have the late game. Ooh, they found Roger. He gets Blink War Stomped. He's going to go down. Great kill there for Alliance. This, like having Enigma down, we saw this yesterday. Ooh, and there's an Omni Slash in the mid lane. They find the Warlock too. So the two yeah, big ultimates removed. The lift on the Queen of... Over here on the TA, they are able to take her down. What just happened? They, they had the chain stuns. Oh, look at Ramses. <laughs> okay, Ramses is on the high ground and they found Pasha in the trees. They know exactly where he is. He's not going to be able to get around. The Orchid, and once again, they've taken down the first life for racing. They're forcing the buyback over on Roger. And Ramses has been zoned back. They still have the Aegis for a little while here on me. Roger, he every hero on, on Every hero on Virtus Pro just died around the map. Like, all five of them died at different parts of the map, like, simultaneously. I, I, I don't think I... You don't see that, like, hardly ever. So that's just incredible communication by Alliance. Yes, and, and, and I think without the Warlock, Roger doesn't want to go for this uh, Black Hole just yet and have this Aegis of the Mortal, and that's going to be a lane of racks. So I, I was talking about how Virtus Pro had slowed down the game, but it's, it's exactly... It just blew wide open. Because, yeah, uh, around the map, kill after kill after kill. I mean, that was 6,000 gold, basically going Alliance's way in just that engagement. If you pay attention to Taiga here, he is sitting so far back. And that's purposeful, right? Like, if you go in on Roger, you go for that blink black hole, it's going to get immediately lift cancelled. So you can't really do anything about it. They find Wraith King here. He does have his ultimate. It's come up pull down again. 
but the Radiance is just uh, proccing uh, this spell shield. Okay, he, he had. Ooh, there's your Aegis. Aegis. <laughs> Do they want to look for the fight now? TA top lane? She's got the they DKB this. Control? I don't know if they're going to be able to pop her. The big black hole as well as the golem on top of all of them. They managed to take down Boxy as one on the back lines over here. It looks like they are retreating. One looking for a little bit more, but they're not going to be able to find it. The slow of the trap, it doesn't really matter. Big Cave will be able to... Also, his blink tagger coming off down. Big Cave does have a... One exit kill inside of VP. Both their big ult. So look at Tiger and check out the spell he stole. <laughs> oh, that's uh, pretty convenient, that's a right? Fairly good spell. Yeah. So he gets the he gets the black hole pretty much right after the cast, but had literally no mana. I think he was sitting at like a hundred mana, so he doesn't reinitiate with it. It's fine because the golem was still available. But now you have it for this upcoming fight, and that's huge for Alliance. Yeah, it's um, no, they're gonna have everything. Side of Alliance where both your big cooldowns. So, you know, Alliance, they just no proved their superiority across the map. Things. And I wouldn't be surprised if they look, do it once again and maybe transition that to another set of rap. Mm -hmm. No one TPing out. Yeah, you're, you're playing with fire here, bud. You're going to go all the way to the top lane. So, they got mid lane racks. They take tier three top. I think Alliance going to shove all these lanes out most likely, look to take shrines and position themselves. I wouldn't say for next Roshan quite yet, just because it is going to be a while before it is up, but they want to definitely be playing Alliance's top half of the map for sure. Actually, Mickey's in a really bad position here. Yeah, they have the stun to follow up from round two, but they have quite enough. He has an only stack, but it's not going to save his demand style. They do that just seems super big. greedy. Uh, but meanwhile, they're trying to kill the TA, the stolen black hole. But well, Solo's on the back line, he can't stop this because there's no Golem and they do. Wait, and now Solo, I think he might have died for his screen of pain since. Now Ramsey, nice blink away, but Pasha able to find Tiger in the back lane, but Foxy, done. Tiger, you can live through this, is sitting at Sam's score. Pasha is on top of him, as well as the Fatal Bond. Tiger, he stole the Shadow Word, so he's healing up himself. He's going to live. vision for him, it turns into oh. daytime. Do they know where he blinks? Pasha, he's going to They came right on him. Oh my gosh, so close. Wow, what a save there from Boxy. Yeah, Boxy. Helping out his buddy. Though that entire time. Yeah, Foxy. Yeah. Do take down the A, so um, Mickey might have overextended, but BP, even though they do get the kill, it's you know, it's kind of just an empty kill in the fact that you're not a objective. Yeah, you have no TA and no warlock now. And the rest of Alliance have no problem pushing out these lanes. Quickfa obviously feeling very safe. Has a sheep stick now picked up, so making these blink initiations onto heroes like TA just that much easier, preventing her BKB for that much longer. Yeah, Boxy has picked up a gem now. Uh, do you like this just so Alliance can more map control, I guess? It's also fantastic against Sand King. You just don't want to have to commit so much, like an, another item slot to like dust or like sentries constantly for these team fights, especially against TA and Sand King. So Boxy just picks up a gem. He's super tanky right now, Vanguard with the uh, Pipe of Insight, and he doesn't really feel too threatened. So I, I really do like the pickup from him. Yeah, it's uh, Roger. He's pretty close to his BKB, and that's going to be a fairly big item. It means Tiger will have to commit. Cancel a black hole in a way, yep. just to get away with that lift. All right, and they get the shrine top, just as we thought. Koifa just chips it down over time, and now Virtus Pro losing that much more of their map to Alliance. Roshan gonna actually have a pretty long respawn timer, a minute 35 still from now. Uh, Ramses, he, he does have his AC. Uh, yeah, he's, he's getting big. Uh, what item do you think next in the pipeline thing? Going to be the. Well, actually, no one has. Governors. Uh, what do you think Ramsey needs? Blink Tagger? Does he need a BKB of his stable to get into those fights? So he has the Blink Dagger, right? I think a lot of times Wraith Kings go BKB, but I don't know if he necessarily needs to. I would go BKB. If I was Ramsey's, that's 100% the item I would buy, just because I would like to play a little safer. But Ramsey's being much more skilled than I am might do something a little bit flashier. Yeah, and, and you know, there's the point that you stay safer, but is that just the win item or is it the not dying? 
kind of both. <laughs> so if Ramsey is allowed to get on top of a hero, like Wraith Fire Blast them and just get like three or four autos off, and with an AC, he has the attack speed to do that, he could probably kill almost any hero on Alliance that's not, you know, Juggernaut or Centaur. But it's... It's unlikely he will be able to do that without a BKB, and he queues up the MKB. So he is going to be going for a little bit more damage, which I'm fine with. He has Reincarnation, so if he gets gone on, he just kind of comes back into the fight with a second life, blinks on, either blinks out or goes on another target, so... It's good. So, uh, the game, it has slowed down a tiny bit. Lines, uh, they just seem to be securing, you know, like, this area of the map. They, they already oh, took yeah. away the, the Dire Shrine and... As soon as the next rope, well, talking of Roshan, it seems to start. And Ver mm -hmm. VP, they know that they know about this thanks to the trap of the TA. Or smoke, actually. Are they going to try and steal? They, I mean, this smoke, they have no idea it's happening. So they could, definitely. Breaking doesn't have Mortal Strike up, though. So no skeletons to help the Roshan. But luckily, they have the minus armor from TA. So it will drop fairly quickly. I think Alliance. This is very fast. They don't know this is happening. They don't even have a scan for the Radiant side. All right, Boxy just walking in. Okay, so they know this is happening. They see how low Roach is. The stuff is on the way to take those two. Yeah, Aegis Boxy. Boxy gets it. Kills the Aegis. And now the Omni Tash is on top of all the Boxy effects by the intel. They're going to take the first life of the Radiant King and Boxy's first life as well. Okay, he's spinning up here. He's using the Omni Tash already on the back line. The Enigma's down, but there's a nice golem. Living stolen golem. Has the healing ward. Has a stolen golem. The lift over here. The Red King, he's going to lose his second life. They've taken down the Red King. No one. He's in the trees. They know where he is. Yes. You will touch your and You're not getting away from this one. Oh, I take that back. Nice blink, but they still Oh my gosh, Boxy. Done, and they're going to clear them up. They stole the Roach kill. They stole the Aegis. They stole everything, and they just called GG for the side of BP. Alliance able to take game. Beautiful play. A lot, like, quick for... He, like his sonic his sonic scream or sonic wave pushes the entire lineup of virtuous pro away from the roshan it also gets the killing blow so the only person within pickup distance of the ages is gonna be the centaur and so he just grabs the ages immediately 